hello everyone today we will see how to send messages to the google chats using webhooks so what we are going to actually do today is we will create a simple view application uh, having a small text box where user can type in some message and we will also be providing the user with a button uh, the click on which a message whatever the user would have typed inside the text box will be sent to the google chats in a chat space right so this is what uh, we are going to today in this lecture uh, so let's get started right now we are on the rappelit home screen what we'll do here is we will quickly create a new project we will be creating an html css project here and let's name it as webhook testing you can name it whatever you want as of now i'm naming it this webhook testing after that uh, i'll just hit enter and we'll wait for a couple of seconds so that i can get an interface like this you can see on the left hand side panel that uh, I have been given three files, one HTML, one JS, and one CSS files. Uh, file. We will be using uh, only the HTML and JS files here. We won't be using the CSS file at all. So since this is going to be a view application, we will be adding a view CDN. Uh, uh, we don't want to use any kind of uh, other setups. So just to make it simple, we'll use the view CDN. And we are using view JS2. So I'll just go to view JS2 documentation and we'll copy this CDN link from here so that I can use it. I'll paste it in the head tag. And after that, uh, this hello world message, I'll remove it from here. And instead, I'll create a div tag. Right? And I'll name it, uh, or uh, instead, I'll you know, create an ID for this as app. Uh, this is going to act as the container element for this application. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, before, you know, we will be having a small text box where user can type in some message. The other one will be a button. So let's create an input text box here. We will be using a view directive here called vModel in order to achieve two-way data binding. So I am going to use vModel. And the variable that I will be using, let's say, is message. We will create this message variable and we'll create the view object. Right now, I'm leaving it as it is. After that, I will be creating a button, right? And since the user will be clicking on this button, so some action uh, needs to be done whenever this button is clicked. So what will I do is I'll bind a click event with this button, right? So we have a view directive, you know, v on, and we can bind any event that we want to. And uh, let's do this, v on, click. And after that, we can provide a value or a method that will get triggered whenever this button gets clicked. So let's name it as send message. Again, we'll be creating it uh, when we will you know, create the view object. Uh, the text in this button can be, let's say, send message. And we will close this button. Uh, the short hand for using this v on is at the rate. We can use at the rate as well. And this will work fine too. So we have created the basic model for the application. Here is the input text box and here is the button. So it's time to create the uh, you know, view object. So we'll go to the JavaScript file and we'll start with the view object. Uh, this will accept certain parameters here. The very first would be the EN. That means with what element you want uh, this view object should be binded with. Uh, this, this is going to be the app. You know, we created one. Uh, div element with id app. Other than that, uh, we will be having a data attribute and inside data, we will create just one variable message. The value of this, I'm keeping it uh, as empty as of now. The reason is so that uh, whenever a user will load this application for the first time, uh, the text input that appears in front of him or her, uh, it appears to be an empty text, right? Since we are using vmod. I think uh, one variable will suffice here. We should not require any more. Uh, if we we'll require, we will create it again. But I guess this should suffice. Uh, apart from that, we will be creating methods. And uh, in methods, we will be creating one called send message because this is what will be triggered when the button will be clicked. So this is going to be a function. And what we will be doing in this function is we will be hitting some kind of URL. We will be using uh, fetch API in order to make a request to a URL so that we can push messages to the uh, chat space in our Google chat. Okay. So since we are going to use the fetch API, we will be, of course, making a request to a URL. What stick URL is going to be? 
right? We have no idea, but that URL is, go is going to look like. So let's have a look at a uh, chat screen here. So this is a simple Google chat workspace. I have already created a you know chat space with name webhook test. What will I do is I'll just open it and I'll click on the top here. And I will be get uh, I will be getting this option to manage webhooks. I'll click on it, and after that I'll get this dialog box, and it will ask me to basically configure a new web. If or uh, some webhooks have already been configured for this particular chat space, you will uh, get the list of those webhooks, and will an option uh, will get an option to add new webhooks as well. So since this is the first time I'm creating a webhook for this uh, chat space, let's name it as uh, let's say message bot. And we have an optional Aftar URL as well. If you want to have a Aftar URL, you can put it here. Otherwise, it is going to use the default one. If you want, you can use some from the online. For example, uh, I will be using this here. I'll just copy this and uh, I'll paste it here. And I'll click on save. Now, once I'll click on save, a uh, webhook has been created for this particular chat space. And this can be accessed using this URL. So this is going to be the URL that we, will, that we will be making a request to. So let's get back to our, uh, you know, Rappelit screen. And what we'll do here is let's create a variable uh, data so that, you know, we can uh, basically write what the message body is going to be. Uh, what will I do is I'll say text. And here I will say that this dot message. The reason I'm doing it here uh, like this is so that whatever the text that user has entered in the text box, uh, that should be replaced with this, this dot message. After that, I'll make a fetch request. Okay. So this will basically accept a URL and uh, an init object. And this init object is going to accept certain parameters like method. So we will be making a post request in this case. And apart from that, since it's a post request, we will be having a request body. And the body needs to be a string. So what we'll do is we will make use of JSON API and we'll use the stringify method of it. And what we'll do is we will convert this data into a string and we'll transmit it over there. Right. So once this is done, we will be handling the responses and the errors. How will we do that? We will do that using chain of bends and catches. So I'll just say then and I'll just say that uh, r.json. After that, uh, I will use one more then. Here, I will get the data. So what will I do with the data is I will, let's say, simply print it on the console and see what will happen. Uh, console.log d. Apart from that, uh, let's use the catch block as well so that we can get to know that if there is any error. So console.log and we'll say that some error occurred and the error is uh, something uh, that we'll be getting at this key. Okay, now we are almost uh, done with this view object configuration as well. The only thing that is remaining here is the URL. So what will I do is I'll go back to the chat space and I'll copy this URL from okay. and I'll paste this URL here. So this URL seems to be a, you know, a big URL here. But uh, that's fine. Now let's just try to understand what we have done so far is we have created a view object. We are binding it with uh, an element having ID app, the data attribute having just, uh, you know, one variable message that too, we are using it with view model. We are going to have one method as well. What we are doing in this method is we are making a fetch request, a post request basically, and we are transmitting some data over the network and then we are dealing with the responses and the errors if they are in. Uh, I guess we are almost done with it. So let's see uh, what happens. I'll click on this run button and see uh, if the application works fine. So I have clicked on it and you can see that uh, we are able to see this text box and this button here as well. Now I'll just say hello. This is uh, my first message and after that i'll click on this button and see uh, what will happen i clicked on this button uh, what happened you can see that uh, we have got a lot of details in the response here right you can see that space thread there are so many attributes that we are getting in the response that means the request has done something 
Now let's go to our chat page screen and see if there is something. So I came back on this chat screen and you can see that we have received a message. Hello. This is my first message. This is exactly what I typed in the input text box. And you can also see that message what is the name uh, that we configured for this web hook. And this is also the avatar. Right? Uh, see, we were using this avatar here. So, right, we are able to send a message to this chat space. Uh, let us just, you know, change this message and say, you know, this is my second message. And again, click on this send message button. I clicked on it and again, I got uh, you know, something in response that has given me quite a lot of details. And when I go back to my chat space, I'll see that one more message has arrived. Okay. So I hope you saw that how uh, easy it is to make use of webhooks and push messages to the Google chats, to the chat spaces. I hope you would have enjoyed this lecture. Uh, so bye-bye. Happy learning.